Grace and peace to you. Welcome to worship with the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We are so pleased that you are worshiping with us. Will you join me in the call to worship? From God comes my salvation. For God alone my soul waits in silence. God alone is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. As we are called to new life in Jesus Christ, we are reminded of ways that we miss the mark. Let us join together in confessing our sins against God and our neighbors. O oh, holy God, you called the disciples to drop their nets and follow you, yet we hesitate to drop the tools and comforts of our lives. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. Forgive us, and by your forgiveness, Open our ears to hear your voice saying to us, follow me. These are God's words. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and given new life. Know this and be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. Today we're going to talk about following. Now, if all of you were here with me in the sanctuary, we would have played follow the leader. We would have gone all around the sanctuary together. And since you're not here, we're just gonna talk about it. Um, I would have had you follow me up the stairs. I would have had you follow me across the chancel, maybe up that far aisle and back down. And you would have followed me. You would have followed me because you know me and you trust me and it would have been fun, right? So our Bible story today is all about following Jesus. Jesus asked some fishermen to draw in their nets and come and follow him. It says in the Bible that they followed Jesus right away. Now we don't know if they knew Jesus at all, but they knew to trust him. 
There was something about Jesus that let them know that this was the right thing to do. This is how Jesus gathered his disciples, the people that would learn from Jesus and be able to spread God's word and light to the world. The fishermen, Simon and Andrew and James and John, they knew how to catch fish in a net. But Jesus wanted them to learn how to catch people in the net of God's love. We can learn how to do this too by listening to the Bible stories and sharing these stories with our friends. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're happy to follow you, to be caught up in your love. Help us to share that love with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join us in our prayer for illumination. God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Listen now for the word of God. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, we read the Gospel of John's version of Jesus' call to the earliest disciples. We saw Jesus call Philip to follow him, and then Philip recruited Nathaniel. We listened in on a conversation between Jesus and Nathaniel, wherein Jesus disclosed his identity. This week, we read Mark's account of Jesus calling the first disciples. Mark's gospel, as you know, begins with the ministry of John the Baptist, whose ministry sets the stage for Jesus' ministry. John is preaching a message of repentance and baptizing people in the River Jordan. John has baptized Jesus. John's ministry foreshadows Jesus' ministry. John the Baptist was an immensely popular preacher. People walked long distances out into the Judean wilderness to hear him preach, to confess their sins, and to be baptized. Yet our lesson for today begins after John was arrested. That's the beginning of our lesson. That word arrested, some versions say handed over, is the very same word that the gospel writer will use when Jesus is arrested. The Roman authorities did not trust popular preachers who drew large crowds. And so again, we see John's ministry foreshadowing Jesus' ministry. And Jesus waits to begin his public ministry until after John is arrested. He does not compete with John for followers or for crowds. And Jesus begins his ministry in an entirely different region, up by the Sea of Galilee, not in the Judean desert. Jesus begins by proclaiming the time is fulfilled, 
and the kingdom of God has drawn near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus is announcing that the fulfillment of God's purposes is at hand in him. And this is the Gospel of Mark in a nutshell. We'll hear a lot more about this, what Mark means by the kingdom of God um, as we go into Lent. That word repent is the same word that John the baptizer uses. We think of repent as acknowledging sin and making amends and saying we're sorry and doing better. But repent is a much more layered word in New Testament Greek. That word repent in the Greek means to stop in your tracks. It means to take your life in an intentionally new direction, to take a turn, to turn around. To repent is to turn one's life around to follow Jesus. And that happens over and over in our lives, not just one time. Jesus begins his ministry by seeking out disciples. He seeks them out rather than waiting for them to come to him. He chooses them. They don't choose him. He chooses them. They're just ordinary people and they're living ordinary lives. And so Jesus first meets Simon and his brother Andrew who are fishing from the shore, throwing their nets into the sea. You don't get a lot when you do that with a net. They are clearly not as well off as the Zebedees who have a fishing boat and have hired help. Follow me and I will make you fish for people, Jesus says to them. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Jesus talks with them in their language. He talks to them about fishing. And he couches his invitation to follow in a way that is compelling. Come and help me to fish for people. You'll have a much more important catch. And so Jesus walks a little further on and uh, walks around the shoreline and he sees the Zebedee boys. They are in their boat with their father, mending nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. We keep hearing this word, seeing this word immediately in the Gospel of Mark. It's used about 40 times in this Gospel. It moves the narrative along. It keeps things going. Mark is like this in storytelling. And so these four people literally drop their nets and drop their lives to follow Jesus when he calls. They leave their lives behind. They repent, that Mark word, by leaving behind their old lives and turning to a new direction to follow Jesus. James and John leave behind their father and what looks to be a thriving fishing business. Some people leave much more behind than others when they answer a call to follow Jesus. Follow me. Two simple little words from Jesus that change everything for those who are ready to hear those words. This day, we celebrate the ordination and installation of elders and deacons. These people have answered the call to follow Jesus by committing to leadership with and for this congregation during these pandemic times. These leaders have turned their lives towards serving here. Many of them are new leaders who are being ordained to service for this time. This is remarkable. It's remarkable that in this pandemic, these gifted people have committed to follow Jesus via the ministry of this congregation. They're turning their lives in a new direction to follow Jesus in this time, in this place with this people. Our ordained leaders make promises to serve and they promise to bring their best to their service. Elders and deacons who answer Jesus' call to follow me know that they are undertaking significant leadership responsibilities, using their energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. And right now they're undertaking significant Zoom meetings. This is no small thing. These leaders have answered the call to repent, as Mark means it, 
by redirecting their lives to new service. All because Jesus said to them, follow me. It is not always necessary to leave our nets behind in order to answer Jesus' call to follow him in a new direction. And this congregation has a responsibility as we ordain and install these new officers. Our responsibility is to listen to them respectfully, to follow their leadership, to trust their leadership as they follow Jesus. We will hear their promises in just a few minutes as they answer the ordination questions. And so I hope that you will join me in answering we do to these questions, which are the congregation's questions. Do we, the members of the church, accept these leaders as ruling elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? And the answer is we do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? And again, we do. This day we give thanks to God that our new class of elders and deacons have recognized Jesus' call and have agreed to follow Jesus by serving here with the Presbyterian Church in Morristown. We are blessed by their leadership. We are grateful for their service. Thanks be to God. Amen. God, we give you thanks for this privilege of ordination and installation for the way in which you lead us to live ever more deeply into our baptismal vows. Uh, help us to um, help us to make this um, <laughs> sacred time, even if it's Zoom time, Zoom time can be sacred time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So listen to these words of our service. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. We are all called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. The session ordains Jason Lawler, Neil Hamilton, Carol Ramsey, and Christine Galinsky to the ministry as deacons, and ordains Michael Carl, Ken Nowitzki, Bob Spur, Karen Griffith, Gretchen Cottonor, and Liz Annis to min the ministry as elders. This evening, session installs to active service those who have been previously ordained, Deacon Karen Crooks and Nancy Shearer and ruling elder Janet Foster. So in accordance with the constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by answering these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. I do, yeah. do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be the Bible the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal, and God's word to you. I do. I do. Uh, do you receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe in? And will you be and led by those confessions as you
Please say, I do and I will. I do, I do, I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, say, I will. I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will. I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so say, I do. I do. I do. And will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, say, I will. I will. I love that one so much. This is a question for the deacon. <laughs> Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. I will. I will. I will. And this is a question for the ruling elders. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people? providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. Will all of the already ordained ruling elders and deacons and clergy on this call, please raise your hands to your screen in blessing as we pray the prayer of ordination. Let us pray. Gracious God, in every place you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ who came to serve and who gave his life to set others free. We give you thanks for these leaders who have said yes to the call to Christ's service in these extraordinary days. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those who are being ordained this evening, whom you called by baptism as your own. We give you thanks for those leaders who continue in the ministry to which you have previously called them. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon the whole church. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, bearing witness to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 You are now ordained and installed as deacons and elders in the service of this congregation. May you do everything with the Lord Jesus Christ in mind. Thanks be to God. Congratulations! <laughs> Let us now open our hearts and minds in prayer to God. Rock and refuge, fortress and deliverer, for you alone our souls wait with silent expectation. You grant us hope and salvation. You are the solid ground on which we stand even when all around us crumbles. We trust in your goodness and mercy and in the power of your steadfast love. Hear us now as we pour out our hearts before you. Lord Jesus, you have proclaimed to us the kingdom of God has come near. We long for its goodness, justice, and abiding peace, and yet acknowledge how caught up our world still is in evil, violent ways. Make us as quick as Nineveh to believe both your call to repentance and your great mercy. Turn us in the direction you would have us go and prepare us as your disciples to lead the way. God of grace, ruler of all the peoples of the earth, 
We lift our nation before you in this time of transition between administrations. Inspire and guide all of our elected officials in their work to address the serious ills of this moment. A raging pandemic, millions struggling under a broken economy, partisan anger that divides us and threatens our ability to move forward as a people, and so much more. Bring us the gifts of truth, self-reflection, rigorous honesty, healing, peace, cooperation, and wisdom. Loving God, in your providence, you have given us the gift of a beautiful creation, a world rich in resources for our flourishing. Yet we have grown accustomed to our ways of exploitation. We pray for all the lives, be they human, animal, or plant, that are threatened or cut short because of our pollution and abuse of your creation. We pray that we may learn to live more peacefully with nature and to be better stewards of your gift. Compassionate God, look upon all who are suffering and support them with your love. We pray for those without a stable home, including migrants and refugees fleeing violence and extreme poverty. We pray for those in prison and those struggling to create a new life upon their release. We pray for those denied dignity and for those who live without hope. As you have moved toward us in love, so lead us to be present with them in their suffering. And we pray for those who are near and dear to us. We lift up the Hayward family as they mourn, Diane, Joyce, Diana, Fred and his family, all those we know who are suffering from COVID-19 and all those undergoing treatment for cancer or another life-threatening illness, and those who we name before you now. Pour out your spirit of compassion, love, strength, and healing upon them, O Lord. In your loving purpose, O God, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all things for which we pray, give us the will to seek to bring them about. We ask all this with faith and hope and trust in you, and in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
receive now the benediction. Now may the grace, love, and mercy of the Almighty and ever-living God be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>